we left at dawn. Our long wooden paddles glinted in the first rays of the morning sun. We peered out across the choppy waters of the Martinic Channel and tried to spy the misty peaks of Dominica far off across the waves. Today we would cross these waters in a 10-hour non-stop expedition to recreate history. The history of the first Kalinago Carib warriors who set out 1,000 years ago to conquer each of these islands in the Caribbean chain. Today we would set out 26 strong, headed due north from the coast of Martinique straight for the lush mountainous shores of Dominica. We set out in a magnificent 60-foot authentic Kalinago war canoe carved in the jungle from the trunk of a single huge tree. We were the Kalinago Canoe Sea Warriors, a 10-member team from Dominica's Carib territory. We were now in Martinique to join the French team, which had planned this project for more than two years. Today at dawn on this beautiful May morning, the combined team of French and Dominican rowers was ready to recreate history. At the tiller was our proud Kalinago elder, Napoleon Sanford, Dominican fisherman and builder of traditional Kalinago canoes. He had trained the Dominican team for six months in the rough waters of the East Coast. Still, we were nervous and afraid. Nothing we had done could compare to crossing the Great Martinique Channel between the two islands in a full-size Kalinago war canoe. Our thoughts turned to rough seas, giant waves, shipwreck, and sharks. Our captain was Ronnie, the tough Maori military officer from Tahiti. He stood up straight in the bow of the Kalinago war canoe and shouted out his first orders. Twenty-four long wooden paddles dipped into the quiet waters of the northern Martinique Bay and the wooden war canoe miraculously glided forward out towards the rough waters of the Atlantic Ocean Channel. The mountain peaks of Dominica were barely visible in the early dawn light some 50 miles away far out in the hazy distance. The spirits were certainly with us on this voyage, because the sea in the turbulent Atlantic Channel between Martinique and Dominica is at most times a dangerous stretch of rough waters and strip countercurrents where many strong fishermen and sailors have themselves lost their lives. We were prepared though, even for the worst. Confident in our months of solid training in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of the Carib territory. But the Kalinago spirits were surely with us, I believe, for that beautiful May morning turned into a clear, windless day, and the sea lay flat before us, smooth, calm, and welcoming. We dipped our paddles and pulled, chanting a Creole song that rhythmed our movements. Ale! Tiawe! Anu Tiawe! The distant peak of the volcano Mount Pele in Martinique sunk lower behind us as we dug into the oncoming waves and pulled away further and further from the island shore. Our hands bled, our backs ached, still we paddled forward, onward in unison, chanting our song, shouting out war cries that the deep blue waters parted before our bow and the distant green mountains of Dominica rose up slowly in the distance to greet us in all their splendor. Never a pause, never missing a beat, riding the sea on our own momentum, we traveled on. Seven grueling hours later, we glided below the rocky cliffs of Scotset. And we triumphantly blew our conch shell trumpet to announce our arrival, just as the Kalinago forefathers had on countless sea voyages of the past. We were welcomed on the village beach by dozens of school children waving Dominica flags while our own native Kalinago drummers performed in full traditional garb. We 
see the Kalinago Sea Warriors were, while very proud of our accomplishment, and a little stiff and tired too, we were just happy to be home. Oh, my God.